Thank you, Jesus. We will start praying Psalms 111. Praise the Lord. I will praise the Lord with my whole heart. In the assembly of the upright and in the congregation, the works of the Lord are great, studied by all who have pleasure in them. His work is honorable and glorious, and his righteousness endures forever. He has made his wonderful works to be remembered. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion. He has given food to those who fear him. He will ever be mindful of his covenant. Hallelujah. Father, I just want to thank you. Oh, glory be to God. My mouth can never stop praising you for your goodness. Gracious Heavenly Father, I come to you in the name of Jesus. And I said, Lord, I want to thank you for your mercies, oh God. I see them every day. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness, God. And Father, I thank you, Lord God, for this group that you have put together. I pray, God, Lord, as we all gather together to praise your name, to Study your word, oh God, to concentrate on you, Father God, that your mm -hmm. presence will fill each home tonight, God. And if there is any discouragement, oh Lord Jesus, anyone feeling anxious, God, your word said in Philippians 4, 7, be anxious for nothing, but in everything in prayer and supplication, let your request be made known. And the peace of God that surpasses all understanding will guard your mind and heart through Christ Jesus. Father God, your words, when I read your words, I know, God, you will perform them. Why? Because your word said without faith, it is impossible to please you. And faith is a substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So when I don't see it, oh God, I know it's coming. I wait on it. Oh, what is to wait in you and trust you. So those who are feeling sick today, know that God is still on the throne. And his word said in Isaiah 53, Oh, God, he was wounded for our iniquities. Hallelujah. The chastisement of him, our peace was upon him. And by his stripes we are healed. So, Father God, we believe those words that are written in faith. In faith, God. And we wait in you. Father, I pray that you bless our worship tonight. Oh, God, let the words of our mouth and the meditation of our heart be acceptable in your sight. Oh, God. And Lord, I pray a special blessing on our Apostle Rahul as he teaches the word again, as he opened this word to us, which is life to those who find them and health to their flesh. Let that be settled in our mind tonight, oh God. Lord, keep us attentive, oh God, to learn your word. Open the eyes of our understanding that we will grasp what your word is saying. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen and amen. Thank you. Glory be to God. All yours. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We worship you, Lord. We welcome you in this place, Lord. We glorify and we magnify, Lord. We surrender ourselves unto you, Lord Jesus. Holy Spirit, lead us, Lord. Holy Spirit, lead us, Lord. We worship you, Jesus. We magnify you, Lord Jesus. We lift you high in our praise, Lord, this time, Lord. Wherever we are, Lord Jesus, every home is a home of worship, O oh God, in this place of our Father. Lord, we worship you, Jesus. Let every, every praise rise from every home right now in the name of Jesus, Lord. We pray, Lord Jesus, help us to focus on you, Lord. We worship you, Jesus. We magnify you, Lord Jesus. We make you big in our lives, O oh God, Father. We glorify you, Jesus. We worship you, Jesus. 
You are worthy of all our praise, O oh God. No one else is worthy, O oh God, but you alone are worthy of our worship. We magnify you, Lord Jesus. We worship you, the Lamb of God. We worship you, the King of Kings, O oh God. We worship you, the Great I Am. We worship you, Lord. We give you praise, O oh Lord. We worship you, Jesus. Hallelujah, God. We worship you, Jesus. We give you praise, Lord. We worship you, Lord. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved the wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. Was grace that taught my heart to fear. The grace my fears relieved. How precious did that grace appear. The hour I first believed. My chains are gone, I've been set free, my God, my Savior has ransomed me, and like a flood, His mercy reigns, unending love, amazing. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved the wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now. grace that taught my heart to fear and grace my fears relieved how precious did that grace appear the hour I first believed my chains are and I've been set free. My God, my Savior has ransomed me. And like the flood, His mercy reigns. An ending love, amazing grace. My chains are gone. God, my Savior, has ransomed me. And like a flood, His mercy reigns. Unending love, amazing rain. The Lord has promised to me is one my hope secures he will my shield and portion me 
as long as life endures. The Lord has promised to me His word, my hope secures. He will my shield and portion be as long as life endures. My chains are gone, my chains are gone. And I've been set free, my God, my Savior, has ransomed me. And like a flood, His mercy reigns, an ending love, amazing grace. My chains are, my chains are gone. I've been set free. My God, my Savior has ransomed me. And like the flood, His mercy reigns. An ending love, amazing grace. An ending love. Amazing grace, an ending love, amazing grace. We thank you, God, for your unending love, Lord Jesus, and your amazing grace in this place, O oh God, Father. We worship you, Jesus. For you. Thank you, Jesus, for pouring your unending love in this place, O oh God. The earth shall soon dissolve like snow. The sun will forbear shine. But God who called me here below will be forever mine. The earth shall soon dissolve like snow. The sun will forbear to shine. But God, who called me here below, will be forever mine. Will be forever mine. We thank you, Jesus. We worship you, Lord. Thank you, Father, Lord Jesus. Everything will fade away, O oh God, Father. But your word and you, Lord Jesus, will never fade away, Lord Jesus, for us, O Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Your word says you are forever with us, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Your word says you will never leave us nor forsake us, O oh God. Thank you, Jesus, for your word, O oh God, Father. We hold on to it, O oh God, Father. We know, Lord Jesus, that you are our Abba, Father, in this place, O oh God. You are our Almighty God in this place, O oh God. We are saved by your grace, O oh God. We are saved by your sacrifice, O oh God, Father. We are saved by, by, because you took our place, O oh God, Father, and led us into your arms, O oh God, Father. We worship you, Jesus. We worship you, Lord Thank you, Jesus. We worship you, Jesus. Who breaks the power of sin and darkness? Whose love is mighty and so much stronger? The King of glory, the King above all kings. Who shakes the whole earth? With holy thunder and leaves us breathless in awe and wonder, the King of glory, the King above all kings. Who breaks the power? Who breaks the power of sin and darkness? Whose love is mighty 
and so much stronger the king of glory the king above all kings who shakes the whole earth with holy thunder and leaves us breathless in awe and wonder the king of glory the king above all kings this is amazing grace this is not failing love That you would take my place That you would bear my cross You would lay down your life That I would be set free This is amazing grace. This is amazing grace. This is unfailing love. That you would take my place. That you would bear my cross. You will lay down your life. That I would be saved. Say for all that you've done for me. Who breaks the chaos back into order? Who makes the orphan a son and daughter? The King of Glory, the King above all kings. Who rules the nations? With truth and justice, shine like the sun and all of its brilliance. The King of glory, the King above all kings. Who brings our chaos back into order? Who makes an orphan a son and daughter? The King of glory, the King of above all kings. Who rules the nations with truth and justice Shine like the sun in all of its brilliance The King of glory, the King above all kings This is amazing grace, this is amazing grace This is unfailing love That you will take my place That you will bear my crown Lay down your life that I would be set free, oh Jesus. And all I say for all that you've done for me. All I say for all that you've done for me. King who conquered the grave, worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy is the King who conquered the grave, worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy is the Lamb who conquered the grave, worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy is the Lamb who conquered the grave, worthy is the Lamb. King who conquered the grave. Come on, the word is the Lamb who was slain. We worship the word is the King who conquered the grave. This is amazing grace. This is a failing love. That you would take my place. That you would bear my cross. That you would lay down your life That I would be set free All I can sing for All that you've done for me The 
sees amazing, the amazing grace. The season failing love. That you would take my place. That you would bear my cross. You would lay down your life. That I would be set free. Oh Jesus. All I say. All that you've done for me All I sing for All that you've done for me Jesus All I sing for All that you've done for me Thank you Jesus We sing for all that you've done for us O God and you're about to do in our lives, oh God, Father. We give you praise ahead of time, Lord Jesus. We give you worship ahead of time because we trust you, because you are our Father, Lord Jesus. We worship you, Jesus. We give you praise. We give you glory. We give you glory, Jesus. We worship you, Jesus. We give you glory, Jesus. We worship you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. A thousand generations were falling down in worship to sing the song of ages to the Lamb. And all who've gone before us and all who will believe Sing a song of ages to the Lamb. Your name is the highest. Your name is the greatest. Your name it stands above the most. All thrones and dominions, all power and positions. Your name. Stands above them all, and the angels cry, Holy, all creation cry, Holy, you are lifted high, Holy, Holy. Cry, holy, all creation cry, holy, you are lifted high, holy, and holy forever. And if you've been forgiven and if you've been redeemed sing a song forever to the land and if you walk in freedom and if you bear his name sing the song forever to the land sing the song forever to the land if you've been forgiven and if you've been redeemed sing a song forever to the land if you walk in freedom if you bear his name sing a song forever to the land Holy, you are lifted high. Holy, 
And the angels cry For holy All creation cry For holy You are lifted high Jesus, the holy forever Lord Jesus. The angels cry, O holy, all creation cries, the holy, you are lifted high, the Worship you, Jesus. We worship you, Jesus. We worship you, Jesus. Holy forever, God. We worship you, Jesus. We worship you, Lord. We worship you, Jesus. We worship you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We worship you, Lord. We worship you, God, who is holy, God. We worship you, Lord. We magnify you, Lord Jesus. You're worthy, Lord, we serve. We worship you, Jesus. Oh 
And I worship you for your name is holy, holy, dear Lord. For your name is holy, holy, dear Lord. you're doing in this place, oh God. Thank you, Jesus, oh God. Thank you, Father, we worship you, Lord. You are holy, God, we serve, Lord. We give you praise, we give you glory for everything, Lord. Lead us and guide us, oh God, Father. Help us to hear you, Lord, clearly, oh God, Father. Help us to, what we hear, Lord Jesus, your words, oh God, Father, may it transform our lives, oh God, Father, and help us to walk in you, oh God, Father, walk in the word that you have given us, Lord. Lead us and guide us, oh God, Father, in Jesus' name, we make this prayer, Lord. Amen and amen. Thank you, Jesus. There is a person here. Yeah, I see a very, a, a crown of honor a crown of authority that you are wearing and um, there are robes like a king that you are wearing <clears throat> but you are taking a broom a mop in your hand and mopping the floor you are you are unaware of what god has given you or the devil has blinded you not to understand what god has clothed you with what god has put on your head and today i break that blindness in the name of jesus christ Hallelujah, that you will operate in the authority that the Lord has given you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. Hallelujah. The discerning Amen. of spirits. Discerning of spirits. That is where we are. Discerning of spirits. I told you some gifts here in the in the gifts of the Holy Spirit are are. I would say compulsorily required by believers. I am telling you, if if God was not merciful and gracious to me, and I did not had a heart of receiving the gift of tongues, it would have been impossible for me to do ministry if I did not had the gift of tongues. We are living, I know people will come around and they will talk about um, men of God in the 17th century. 
men of God in the 18th century, men of God before that never spoke in tongues, and but they, they preached the word, never talk about tongues and how they did ministry. God operates in times and season. The season we are living in, I told you, it's the season of warfare. We are very near to the uh, to the coming of of our Lord, and uh, we are also very near to the revealing and the seating of the Antichrist. We are very near to the mark of the beast. We are very near. The devil knows that he has a short time, and in such a season of warfare, uh, that's why God says that in the last days He's talking about a specific season. You see. He's talking about the end days, end times, the last days. In those days, he says, I will pour up on, um, I will pour my spirit on all flesh. So some gifts will be common among all believers. Prophesying will be common. Um, seeing dreams, seeing visions. That is where discernment also comes. We'll come to that. So, so there are many theologians who will fight on the thing oh you know no all believers cannot speak in tongues but i am bringing you the word of the lord the heart of the lord the lord wants you to have certain gifts all of you if you desire for it he will give it to you some of them speak oh i cannot have all the gifts have you even asked for it in the first place have you even desired for it those preachers and so-called so teachers teaching people you cannot all believers cannot speak in tongues and this and that and all those things have you that teacher i want to ask them a question have you first of all asked the lord for the gift of tongues have you have you earnestly desired from the lord for the gift of tongues and this is another gift that is required i am telling you by every believer the discerning of spirits the discerning of spirit so we saw this gift that comes after the gift of prophecy we are done with prophecy we are done with with a little bit of the discerning of spirits so what is the gift of the discerning of spirits that i told you last time the gift of the discerning the gift of the spirit of discernment or the discerning of spirits functions on having knowledge and understanding of the word of god first and secondly spending hours with god in the secret place spending hours with god in the secret place these two combined will will help you to operate in the gift of discernment these two combined and i i i showed you from the bible hebrews 5 14 how how the Bible talks about that those who eat solid food by practice of use, they are able to exercise their senses, spiritual senses towards discernment. Those who are eating solid food, that means those who go deep into the word of God, spend time with the Holy Spirit, reading the word of God, meditating on it, receiving from the Holy Spirit are able to exercise their spiritual senses towards discernment. I told you last time that the great falling away in the body of Christ is coming because of no discernment. And there is no discernment because people have stopped meditating on the word of God. So they are not able to see the events they are they are they are seeing the events but they are not able to evaluate what they are receiving accepting and celebrating with the word of god if you don't have any knowledge from the word of god you are not you will not be able to discern that is the lord told me that is the first requirement of discernment are we together so i have covered those things i told you some main points I told you, discernment is the product of lack of discern, sorry, deception is the product of lack of discernment and lack of discernment is the product of wordlessness. When you don't understand God's word, when you don't understand God's word, you cannot discern. You cannot discern. Some people try to meditate on God's word, try to read God's word. No, you cannot read God's word without surrendering and submitting to the Lord, surrendering all your life and then surrendering to the Holy Spirit. And you have to only depend on the Holy Spirit, the teacher. 
to explain you the word of God, to teach you the word of God. Anyways, I, 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 any which ways, I told you about all those things. Another thing I told you from Ezekiel 44 verse 23, it says they should, they should teach my people the difference between the holy and the profane and between the good and the evil. So teaching ministry, the priest should teach the people that the Lord is saying the difference between the holy and the profane, the difference between the good and the evil. So for you to develop the gift of discernment, it just does not come and you start to discern everything. The, the gift of discernment has to be worked upon. There are so many, there are deeper, deeper, deeper things even in the demonic kingdom. If you want to, if you want to understand the root causes of things happening in nation, if you even, let, let's not go to the nation. If you want to even understand the root cause of things happening in your life, in your family, you, you need discernment to go deep, to go deep and understand the root cause. And it will, the gift will not just come like that. The gift has to be nurtured. The gift of discernment has to be developed. It will only happen by meditating on the word of God, by spending time with the Lord, with the Holy Spirit in the secret place, be filled with his wisdom and being under a teaching ministry, a teaching ministry, being under a voice, being under the godly leadership, under, under a ministry which teaches the difference between the holy and profane, which teaches the difference between good and evil. Are we understanding which is a hallelujah? So many people hallelujah. are not, many people are blind. <clears throat> okay, don't take this as a critical or a criticizing statement, but the Believers in the mega churches, how many of them would be there? 20,000, 25,000. They are all blind because the priests there don't teach between the difference between, between the good and evil, between the holy and profane. But rather that they reverse everything and teach it to people. Or, or maybe they will not even come to the evil side. They will only talk about the good. So people are blind because they are not under a leadership, a godly leadership, which is a teaching ministry that is equipping people in discernment. Ezekiel 44 verse 23 talks about it. God says, you should teach my people. That's the stress of God. That's the emphasis of God about the teaching ministry. Hallelujah. And I told you, I told you that how how the devil in our time and season, in this season, is reversing everything. The Antichrist doctrine is to reverse everything. In Daniel chapter number 7, I will not go into those things. If those are uh, about the Antichrist, what he will do. I have taken those things in other sermons. Isaiah 5.20, where he says, Woe to, one, to those who, who take good for evil and evil for good. A reversal doctrine has been applied. A reversal doctrine. We will come to some of those demonic doctrines, manipulative teachings. But let me tell you, let me show you another word. Now, let's go. Let's go to tonight into the gift of discerning of spirits. So the first thing I want to start off with is the leaders over God's people should have discernment and should teach them the same. If you are a pastor, you should have discernment. I want to tell you, if you are, a, if you are even a, someone who is leading a small group of people in prayer, if you are even, a, even a, a, a woman who is leading a small prayer meeting of other women, don't lead if you don't have discernment. Wait for God. Develop the gift of, don't, don't stop leading. I know women who are leading prayer meetings. I know men who are leading uh, ministries no zero discernment you are leading the sheep into into ditches you are leading the sheep into darkness Go, leadership should have discernment the leaders should have discernment deuteronomy chapter number 1 <coughs> deuteronomy chapter number 1 
वर्स नंबर थर्टीन ड्यूटरोनॉमी चैप्टर नंबर वन वर्स नंबर थर्टीन चूज वाइज अंडरस्टैंडिंग एंड नॉलेजेबल मैन फ्रॉम अमोंग योर ट्राइब्स एंड आई विल मेक देम आई विल मेक देम हेड्स ओवर यू एंड यू आंसर मी एंड सेड द थिंग द थिंग विच यू हैव टोल्ड अस टू डू इज गुड सो सो आई टुक द हेड्स ऑफ योर ट्राइब्स वाइज एंड नॉलेजेबल मैन एंड मेड देम heads over your leaders leaders of thousands leaders of hundreds leaders of 50s leaders of tens and officers for your tribe so god wants us to choose wise understanding and knowledgeable all these are attributes of discernment i will come to that wisdom understanding and knowledge are the attributes of discernment in the book of proverbs chapter number 2 we will come to that afterwards but that is what discerning leaders those who are wise knowledgeable and understanding understanding of the lord able to discern able to discern those should be the leaders placed over god's people hallelujah are we understanding so a leader has to be discerning there are so many churches who are getting corrupt because there is a pressure on the pastor to 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 give leadership to people not because they are discerning but because they are in the church for a long time maybe 25 30 years old and they come we have been in the church long time 25 years old so give us something to do they have they have grown in time you know they have been they have gone through time 25 years in length of time but they have not grown from babes to matured christians and they are given leadership i know churches who are who have done that i know churches whose leadership completely changed and all carnal carnal people were giving given leadership and i saw those churches big, turning from a house of god into a club the only things that happen in the church is brunch lunch dinner parties men's meeting movies it's a club <laughs> it's a club no prayer meetings at all i was in a church i used to push prayer i used to push the gifts of the holy spirit teach the things of the spirit but the pastor i don't know what spirit came in him he started he did not like him like like that and he said all oh, these things needs to be stopped i said well if these things needs to be stopped i have no place here the anointing will not i i don't want to just sit in a church who do not who do not want to speak in tongues who do not want to pray i don't want to sit in that congregation who do not want to pray long time back at the at the age of 1920 when 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 i started to minister so i don't want to sit in that place and and then the pastors after after that i saw the pastor have selected leaders and all that goes in that church is lunch and brunch and whatever you know youth meeting in the youth meeting there is no word there is movies there is parties there is picnic there is uh, snacks mcdonalds and burger kings oh, hallelujah and all those stuff and <laughs> if i remember before i i came there and i warned i rebuked i rebuked the leadership there because it's not because i i i want to be someone there because god showed me a dream at the at the you know just before i was going to leave god showed me a dream in the dream i i saw myself teaching the word to the people in the church but the people in the church were so distracted you know why because there was a buffet system laid out on the table just beside where they were sitting where we will do a meeting and people were so distracted and they many of them got up and started to eat those buffet and i saw the pastor wearing a tank top and having a big in the dream having having a big utensil with oil in it and he was frying snacks in it and he was sweating i and in the dream i went to him i said and the pastor's wife was also putting all those snacks and he was big big utensil you know what you call that in india they do that in in the sweet shop and and with a big big uh, handle what whatever is that they were he was frying 
And I said, what you are doing? And he was not able to answer me. And then the Lord told me after that dream, he is, he is feeding people with his own strength and with his own intelligence, the, the, the food that he wants to feed of the flesh. And people will go towards that here. People will go more towards that. The Hallelujah. Are we understanding why those things are happening? Lack of discernment. Lack of discernment. The one who has discernment will tell people. And if people don't listen and align, leave that group. Leave that group who do not pray in tongues. Leave the group who do not at all don't at all pray you have no purpose you are a child of god you are a warrior you have no purpose in that gathering who don't even pray who who uh, where the church is just a club just a club hallelujah any which ways that is happening because of leaders who don't have discernment hallelujah if god, god we i will never appoint leaders who will who have no discernment because it's dangerous. It will change the house of God into a den of thieves. If we place leaders who have no discernment, leaders should have discernment, wisdom, understanding, and knowledge of God, which are the attributes of discernment. Okay, let us let me come to the next aspect of the discerning of spirits. The next, next aspect of the discerning of spirit is love not love not as the world does but love in knowledge and in all discernment love not as the world does but love in all knowledge and discernment turn with me to philippians chapter number one and verse number nine philippians chapter number one and verse number nine <laughs> it says here and this I pray that your love may abound still more and more but wait in knowledge and all discernment I pray Apostle Paul is praying for Philippians for the church of Philippians in the Philippians he's saying that I pray this that your love that you love Okay, you may love and your love may abound still more and more, but that love should be in what? In knowledge, in all discernment. This is a very important topic I am going to speak tonight. Because the love of Christ is manipulated. Oh, we need to love everyone. We need to care for everyone. But listen, you cannot love, you cannot love people. You cannot show love to people. You cannot give love to people as the world does, as the flesh does, as the emotion does. The Bible says you got to love people as Christ loved you. So first of all, you got to understand how Christ loves you. How what? Christ loves you. Stay with me. Everyone say, I need to love in all discernment. Everyone confess that first. I need to love in all discernment. I need to love in all discernment. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes. Because I am going to, because this is, remember I told you about the reversal thing, devil reverse is good for evil, evil for good. This is a part of the reversal doctrine. Love everyone. I have heard people saying, Lord, let the whole world, everyone in the world go to heaven and be saved. Don't pray prayers which are not biblical. Don't pray those prayers. Don't pray something that is never going to happen. Yes, if that's not never going to happen. <laughs> I know the Bible. I know that God says that he does not delight in the perishing of the soul. But that's why he gives watchmen to warn them. And people will not listen. And everyone cannot go to heaven. That prayer will never be answered. That prayer is a prayer in the flesh. And I, I don't want to offend anyone praying that prayer. But I am telling you the truth. That that prayer that you are praying. Creates zero impact upon the enemy. Zero impact. Because you are not praying in the spirit. 
and you're not praying by the scripture. Zero impact. There are prayers that shakes the kingdom of the enemy. Those are prayers that are done in the spirit and done with the understanding that the Holy Spirit gives us. But there are prayers that the devil is not bothered about. You pray whole night, the devil will not even disturb you. You will go on praying. He is not bothered about all those prayers because you are praying in the flesh. Uh, any which ways. We have to love in all discernment. First of all, we got to understand that we cannot, Christians cannot love as the world loves through emotionalism. Oh, I, I am feeling sorry. I want to do this I and all those things. But we have to love as first Christ loved us. So a Christian who never understand, who never has a true relationship with Christ can never love people with the love of Christ. First, you have to understand how Christ loves you. How Christ loves you. Let me give you that scripture first. John chapter number 3. John chapter number 3. Verse number 16 to 21. John, the gospel of John chapter number 3. Verse number <clears throat> 16 to 21. For God so... Oh, no, 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 not that one. I'll, uh, uh, we will come to that afterwards. But let me come first to John 13, verse number 34. Gospel of John, the same book. John chapter number 13, verse number 34. A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another as what? I have loved you, that you also love one another. That is the commandment. But you only, people only stress, we have to love. Why? Because Christ told us, love everyone. Love, love, love. No, the commandment is, love others as what? I have loved you. I have loved you. How did, how did Jesus love Peter? Jesus did not put his hand in all the things that Peter was doing. When, once uh, Peter said, once Peter said, Master, you will not go to the cross. No, no, no. I will not allow you to go to the cross. The master said, Jesus said to Peter, get behind me, Satan. For you are mindful about the things of men, but not about the things of God. That is love. That is love. But no, 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 no. We cannot speak to people like that. We have to love them. That is not the love of Christ with which you are loving people. Are we understanding something? Let me tell you one thing. Let me simplify and tell, tell you what I'm trying to say. What I'm trying to say is you have to love others as Christ has loved you. So for loving others, first you have to understand how Christ treats you, how Jesus loves you. Now, for example, if you are going and standing with a bunch of smokers and, and speaking and, and joking around filthy jokes with them, Jesus will not stand there and tell you, I love you, my daughter. I love you, my son. But what will he will not, he will not even leave you completely, but his presence will not be there with you. He will leave that place. He will he will he will leave that place when you are into something that is not of Jesus, that is not as per the word, that is the love of Jesus. Listen to me. So you will say, oh, I love my children because God has told me love everyone. I love my husband. But what? What when your children are, are, you know that they are doing adultery, what you tell them, I love you, but I am not taking part in what you are doing here. I am not with you. This is against God. You are sinning against God. So I, I will not be with you in your, this decision. Your child says to you, you know what, mommy, mommy, I want, I love this man and I want to, I don't want to marry now, but we want to live together. We want to live together in a house and we want to have a live-in relationship. Oh, yeah, daughter, I love you. Jesus told me to love you. And you, the love of Christ will never let, let you take part in sin and evil. You understand that? When there is sin and evil, the love of Christ will not participate in sin and evil. But the doctrine that is taught in the church today is the love that you have to love everyone. By taking part and putting your hand and giving your approval into sin and evil. That is, that is what the, the church is teaching. So, love others as Christ loves you. 
love of Christ does not approve of evil and sin. But we teach, the church is teaching today to practice, practice love that takes part and even approves and even promotes sin and evil. You understand that? You will see that a lot. You will see that a lot. I mean, I love, but I will, I will not go my go into emotional loving, fleshy loving, where I am approving someone's sin and approving someone's evil doings in my love for them. Hallelujah. Are we understanding? There are Christians around. They 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 they, they did not. They stop listening to me because they are saying I am I am talking about what is happening in the world. I am talking about the evil is happening, but you should not talk. We were also sinners. We also cry. Uh, you know, we God also waited for us, but we cannot support sin and evil in the name of love. That is the new age love. That is the demonic love. That is the love that entertains and supports and approves evil and sin. Are we understanding that? Hallelujah. Do you know that in one of, our, of the nations in Europe, they have removed the word, they are removing, I don't know they have removed or not, but they are in process of remo removing the word church and put, instead of church, put community because some class of people are getting offended by church. So they don't want to offend the people, so they, they are removing church. That is the great falling away that is coming in the name of love. Are we understanding that? That is the great falling away that is coming in the name of loving people. Loving people, helping me. Oh, I, I, I want to love that person. I, some people, yeah, you, if you love someone truly, pray for them. Don't go extra mile to do things here and there. I've seen people, oh, I love that homeless person. I love, I have compassion. And you bring some homeless people to your home. You don't know, you are bringing spirits to your home. You are being, bringing some people who will never change. Because you don't have discernment. The doctrine of so-called love is deceiving you. Do we understand that? Okay. But Jesus said in the right. word of God, Jesus said, I was hungry, you did not feed me. I was thirsty, you did not give me a drink. Read that scripture. I don't, I forgot, but read that scripture. It says, I was hungry, you did not feed me. I was thirsty, that, but you, you did not give me a drink. And then he says, all of these things that you will do for my brethren. Those who believe in Jesus. Those who are of the same household of faith. Any believer who is actually struggling, who puts his faith in Jesus, but the devil is troubling him genuinely, that believer wants to grow. And you ignore help, that means you did not help Jesus. That is the context of the scripture. Are we understanding? You are not the savior. Jesus is the savior. So we don't become the savior showing as if we will save the world. We will save all the homeless people. We will save all the drunkards on the street. We will stray, save all the drug addicts. Don't act like that. You are not the savior. <laughs> Hallelujah. False love. False love. False love. I know some Christians who bring drug addicts to their home. No. My ministry is to serve them. And they are taking drugs in your house. They are taking drugs. At the cost of saving them, you are manipulating your own altar. That was not the love of Christ. Do we understand that? Hallelujah. That, that is not the love of Christ. No, 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 no. When, when we tell them there was, I, I was, I, I have been, I have ministered, I have ministered and supported and, and initiated, but I, you know what, I am not like that person that will tell, oh, uh, you have to take my tag that I am your father, I laid the foundation. But I have helped pastors, evangelists to build many churches in many areas. But I never keep a record that I built many church churches, I did this, I did that. No, I don't, I am not, I'm a person who does not boast about all those stuff. But I was there in a, in a, with a person who wanted to build a church, so I was helping him in his local area. And I labored, I labored more than him, I labored there because I was doing God's work. And he was in this false love and always, this guy used to talk about love, love, love. He, he used to take 1 Corinthians chapter number 13. Oh, you have gifts, you have this. No, that is, it means nothing. You need to have love, love people, love people, love people, love people. 
and he himself did not understand how Christ loved him. But he used to always talk about love, 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 love. And the people used to come in the church, but that church got demolished. I mean, spiritually, the church stopped because zero people started to come because of this person's problems, this pastor's attitude. And there was a person that was coming to the church. The boy was crippled. And he, he came of one of, in one of the so-called crusade. There I met the family and I prayed for the boy. When I prayed for the boy, the mother had a vision and she saw the boy standing up and opening the fridge and walking around in the house. And the boy was not completely healed, but the mother saw a vision and the legs and the hands of the boy were loosened, but not completely healed. I told the family, the boy will be healed when you put your faith and you leave idolatry. Then the boy will be healed. But they never did so. They wait for two days, oh, when it will happen? And then they say, ah, why it is not happening? Why it is not happening? And this pastor used to entertain them. He used to tell me, oh, you know what? We need to be patient. We need to be loving. We should not tell them this. We should not tell them that. False love. At last, they went to idol worship and they killed the boy. They said the boy is dead because, but they killed the boy. False love can destroy people. Leaders cannot have this kind of false love. Love in all discernment. Love in all discernment. Okay, now come with me to John chapter number 3. Come with me to John chapter number 3. Verse number... <clears throat> this is the gospel. John 3.16 For God so loved the world. But unfortunately, I am telling you, most of the Christians don't understand the scripture. And they don't know, know the full meaning of the scripture, of the love of Christ. So are we on John chapter number 3, verse number 16 until 21. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He who believes in him is not condemned, but he who does not believe is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is condemnation that the light has come into the world and men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. For every pract everyone practicing evil hates the light and does not come to the light, lest his deeds should be exposed. But he who does the truth comes to the light that his deeds may be clearly seen that they have been done in God. So, what I want to say to you is, God offers his love for all. He offers his love for all through his son. But only those who believe in his son are saved, receive his love. But those who reject the love, those who reject Christ, those who reject his word, his doctrine are condemned, not because God condemns them, because they chose by themselves to be condemned. That's how the love of God operates. God is love and he offers love for everyone. But not all can receive from his love until and unless we receive. What did Jesus say? If you love me, what? Obey my commandments until we receive his commandments. So let's not be manipulated by this false love doctrine that God loves everyone. That's the antichrist principle that is coming. That God, the, the, the head of the, of the so-called Vatican, the church that is there in Vatican are are promoting demonic doctrines already. And that's why I saw one of the mainline churches, some of the mainline churches in, in the US who have already the, the pastor who is leading the church, church is from the, from the community, the pride community. Because they say we need to promote this because 
Jesus loves everyone. But have you accepted the word of Jesus for you to receive his love? Are we understanding? That's why Apostle Paul prays for the church and he says, I pray that you will your love will abound more and more in all knowledge and in all discernment. You have to love with discernment. Don't take upon yourself to love everyone, to show your care for everyone. Be discerning and then you love. Are we understanding? This is a false doctrine because if you say you need to love, oh, but but they are not, they are rejecting the word of God. Oh, we also rejected the word of God once upon a time and they are also rejecting it, but we need to love them. That's wrong. That's wrong. If someone rejects the word of God and lives a life of sin and evil, God's love is offered to him or her, but God's love does not dwell in them because they did not receive the love. Are we understanding? So you, you don't take the obligation to love them and to do something for them. If you really care for them and if you really love those people with the love of Christ, just pray for them and leave them. Do we understand that people of God? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, Jesus says love, love, love. What Jesus said, love, love, love. He went into the temple. My Jesus went into, into the temple, made a whip and whipped people who were selling doves, who were selling, uh, exchanging money in the temple. That is my Jesus. My Jesus told the Pharisees, you are brood of vipers. You are hypocrites. You are blind people leading the blind. That is Jesus speaking to the Pharisees. That is the love of Christ that does not take part in evil, rather exposes evil. Are we understanding that? Many people will deceive you with 1 Corinthians chapter number 13. You know, love is patient, love is kind, love is... Oh, let me also come to that scripture. People don't... People are taking scripture, twisting scripture, and because we don't have depth in the understanding of the word, we are deceived and we are not able to discern. Let's go to that scripture. Okay, verse 1 Corinthians chapter number 13. What Apostle Paul writes about love. <clears throat> Let's start from verse number 4. Love suffers long and is kind. Okay, let me start off from verse number, verse number 3. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned, but have not love, profits me nothing. So he's saying, though I give my goods to the poor, that means he's helping the poor, but it can happen that there is no love of Christ in it, even when you are helping the poor. We have to read the scripture properly. Before that, you can read, he says, do I speak with the tongues of angel and have not love, I have nothing and all those stuff about the gifts. So he says the love of Christ, but you got to understand how Jesus loves you. He will not entertain your evil. He will not entertain when you are sinning. His presence will leave you. But there are don't don't believe in the in the Facebook pictures. Don't believe in the WhatsApp pictures where you where they they create a picture and where and and and, and nowadays don't don't see picture Jesus's image Jesus. You know they are sending a lot of Jesus where Jesus is opening his heart and there is opening his chest and there is a heart inside the chest and he says I love you. Will you ignore me today? That is not Jesus. That is not how he says things. Okay, those are demonic pictures, I'm telling you. Because I was going through a documentary and it is an authentic documentary about a former Satanist. And he says that, um, you know, Satan can transform himself into men. He can transform. And he says the Jesus that comes on the pictures with long hair and all, that is how exactly Satan looks when he met Satan. So don't believe in, we don't know how Jesus looks, um, but we have to understand, we don't even have to understand how Jesus looked on earth. We have to see his eternity, eternity form in Revelation chapter number one. He has the eyes of fire. That is how we have to look at him. He has the hairs as white as wool. That's it. We don't have to have the image of Jesus. But, but these people have these images all around the so, social media. And uh, they will have images like someone is smoking, but Jesus is hugging the smoker. 
and saying, G I still love you, even though you sinned. No, Jesus will not do that. Because the Bible says, blessed is the man who stands not in the counsel of the ungodly, stands not in the paths of the sinners, sits not in the seats of the scornful. So when you are smoking, when you are drinking alcohol, when you are committing adultery, Jesus is not with you for your information. His love is not like that. His presence has left at that time when you are sinning. His, the, that's why the spirit of Jesus is called the Holy Spirit. He will not take part in unholy things. Are we understanding? So love of Jesus does not take part Amen. in evil, does not take part in sin. Okay, coming back to the scripture, chapter number 13, 13, 1 Corinthians. He talks about all those things, even though I bestow my goods to the poor, feed the poor, but have not love. So there can be you feeding the poor, giving to the poor, but you still don't have the love of Jesus in you. Then it says, love suffers long and is kind. Love does not envy. Love does not parade itself, is not puffed up. He's explaining what is love suffers long and is kind. That means someone who is going on sinning, you are not taking part in the sin, but you are praying for that person. That is that is suffering long. Jesus said to the disciples, how long shall I bear with you, O faithless generation? So that is intercession. You can help the person with prayer without taking part and approving of that practice of sin. So that is what Apostle Paul is defining love as. Does not parade itself. It's not puffed up. Does not behave rudely. Does not seek its own. Is not provoked. Thinks no evil. Does not rejoice in what? Iniquity. Everyone say, love does not rejoice in iniquity. Love does not rejoice in iniquity. Many Christian parents, many Christian parents, oh, because, especially in the West side, because the culture is so, many Christian parents approve and rejoice in the wrongdoings of their children and from the beginning you did not brought up your child in a manner that when he grows up the bible says he should fear the lord teaching him godly principle teaching the the child the bible teaching the child the ways of god praying on him praying on her and installing and telling god god put your fear in my child let let my child walk in your fear and even as they grow up, you, you, you people are in rejoicing in their iniquity. People, parents are, you love, to, and they say, no, no, no. I was also like that in my young age. Now I am old. Now I am following Christ. So I also, no, you cannot do that. You cannot rejoice and take part in the iniquity of other people. Not even about children, but about other people. You cannot rejoice in iniquity. When I was working in the office, I took part in no office parties because they drank alcohol. And I said, I cannot come with you. I cannot. No, no, brother, you got to love. You are ministering in the church. You are also, you should be also with the outside people. Go with them. No, I cannot go with them because the love of Christ that I have does not rejoice in the iniquity of people. Or do we understand that? This is what Paul is speaking and we take it in a, in a different sense. Does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth. Bears all things, believes all things. Now that, that does not mean that we have to believe everything that people say. It is talking about believes all things that the word says. The true love believes all things that God says. Okay? Hallelujah. And, and a person who has true love has the capa capacity of bearing, you know, bearing and, and keeping quiet while evil is going on. You are not provoked easily. That is the true love of Christ dwelling in you. That is what is the scripture is saying. Be believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. You can endure even as the enemy presses. To, uh, perfect love casts out all fear. So there will be security in your heart. There will be endurance. Jesus endured the cross. Sinners and mockers, blasphemers slapped him. They beated him up, but he kept his mouth quiet. He did not speak a word. That is true love of Jesus. Hallelujah. Are we understanding that? 
that is what but, but many people take it no 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 uh, my, people will do whatever they want but we should not speak no that is not the idea of the scripture it says that when the devil attacks you sometimes you have to endure and keep silent and wait on the lord that is endure all things do you understand that that is hope all things but people i have seen pastors teaching no 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 we should we should bear all things that people are doing whatever they are sinning we should believe them whatever they are saying that is that is blindness that is not true love do we understand that scripture so so the love of christ always understand that you need to love in all discernment how you will love in all discernment simple you have to understand the way christ loves you treats you then you will understand that if you are taking part in sin he is not with you there he leaves you there and when you are sinning as a father he chastens you he rebukes you he punishes you not to hell but to correct you and bring you to the right path then when you understand the love of christ for you how he treats you your relationship with him then you will be able to love people properly are we understanding that hallelujah then you will be able to love hallelujah. people with the love of christ so i brought you here because discernment is needed in our love towards people discernment is needed in our love towards people hallelujah there are some people for a time god will say okay pray for them minister to them then he will say when he will see contradictions uh, in the word contradictions and rebellion then he will say no don't waste your time i will leave it's not that no i don't love them but i'm following the word of the lord my love is in the love of christ the way christ loved me i love people i don't go extra mile to show my emotions and show my care and and show this and that with a false love those those love are fake love those those kind of love is a fake love you know it it accomplishes nothing hallelujah so to end it all the love of christ let me come again the love of christ does not approves of evil and sin but we teach and practice love that takes part in and even approves and promotes sin and evil that's the love of the world okay so hallelujah let's go to the next area of discernment to the ne next area of discernment to the next area of discernment discernment of spirits by detecting the symptoms discernment of spirits by detecting symptoms by detecting signs what i am speaking that that comes to a person when the person is under a teaching ministry and when the person meditates on the word of god sits with the holy spirit to understand the word of god what will happen to you is you will start to detect symptoms and discern the person is not from god discern like i took the this series on gifts when i took the word of wisdom word of knowledge i at the end of those gifts i told you the differentiation how does the demonic gift operates and how does the godly gifts operate so when you took that teaching and when you understood those teachings when you studied it heard it time and again and then after having gained that understanding you see a person and you see those symptoms i mentioned to you in that person you will understand that this person you will discern the spirit in the person so that is discerning the spirit by looking at the symptoms by looking at the at the characteristics which has developed and nurtured in you because you have meditated on god's word and you have been under a teaching ministry under a voice that teaches discernment let me show you acts chapter number 8 acts chapter number 8 <clears throat> verse number 17 to 24 acts chapter number 8 <clears throat> verse number 17 to 24 then they laid hands on them and they received the holy spirit and when simon saw that through the laying on of the 
apostles' hands, the Holy Spirit was given, he offered them money, saying, Give me this power also that anyone whom I lay hands may receive the Holy Spirit. But Peter said to him, Your money perish with you because you thought that the gift of God could be purchased with money. Stop that. So Peter was not like, you know, brother, brother, you know what? Um, uh, yes, yes. You, I, I will take the money and lay hands. And when you will ask, Apostle, why did you do that? Because the gift of God, but because he is a new believer. Maybe the Holy Spirit, did, he did not get the Holy Spirit, but he was encouraged. No, we have to love people. You know, that is how people react nowadays. That is how pastors react. But Peter detected a symptom. And when he detected, detected the symptom, he decided not to be polite towards the man. Was, oh, this, this man of God is very rude. He is not rude. He detected a symptom and he detected a spirit in Simon. What was the spirit? The spirit of sorcery. As soon as he said, I want the gift of the Holy Spirit and this is money. Give me the gift. Detected the, detected the symptom and Peter's behavior changed towards the man. Until now, this man, are you understanding people of God? If you are there, say hallelujah. Stay with me. Hallelujah. 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 If, if you, the spirit of God is truly dwelling within you, you will never be polite and loving towards a sorcerer. When you detect that, the, that a sorcerer is a sorcerer, the fire of God will come and you will speak the word of God either to make him repent or either to destroy. That is, that is Christianity, people of God. That is Christianity. Hallelujah. Read your Bible carefully. Amen. See how apostles reacted when they detected a spirit of sorcery in a person through which he wanted to Christianize himself and become a servant of God. So this guy was with Philip the evangelist who was preaching and teaching and ministering in Samaria. So this guy was a sorcerer. He deceived people. If you read the previous verses, I've already taken many times this scripture. He was a sorcerer. He used to deceive people with the power of, de of the devil, of demons. But when Philip came, people started to believe in the gospel that Philip preached to them. And great signs, wonders and miracles happened through the ministering of Philip in that city. And people, st people started to follow Philip. So these sorcerers are trend followers. Whatever is trending, they will get into that. If Jesus is trending, they will become a Jesus follower. Are we understanding? If magic is trending, they will become a magician. You see how these celebrities in the church behave? The celebrity Christians, the celebrity singers. Oh, he became a Christian. But after one month, he doesn't, he again goes to Satan. Because he became a Christian because he follows the trend. They want to be trending. They want to be in the trend where people acknowledge them. So he was trying to get into the trend. But when he offered money to Peter, he said, take this money, lay hands on me. So I will get the Holy Spirit. P Peter detected a symptom. These are the things that I used to teach you in the gifts of the uh, Holy Spirit previously. How to detect the wrong spirit. Mammon is always attached to the wrong spirits. And when you detect the symptoms, don't go ahead with what they are asking. Rebuke them and get away from them. That is what Peter did. He said, your money perished with you because you thought that the gift of God could be purchased with money. You have neither part nor portion in the matter, for your heart is not right in the sight of God. How did Peter know that? Because he saw a symptom that he is buying things of God with money. He said, you don't have the right heart with God. Discernment, discernment comes with the knowledge of the spirit, of the word and the spirit that you have understood, that you have learned. And then when it is in you, any person showing up those symptoms, you can detect and know that this person is a sorcerer. 
this person is operating in the spirit of sorcery he wants the holy spirit not to minister for god he wants the holy spirit to feed his own belly he wants the holy spirit to 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 make himself famous again in the city of samaria he wants the holy spirit to establish another kingdom that will fight against the kingdom of god we are not going to entertain such people whose god is their belly and who want to build their own empires peter said your money perish with you your money perish with you you have neither part nor portion you have no part in this ministry we will not take you in that is how that is how discernment operates hallelujah along with discernment we see in the scripture there is boldness there is no pleasing of men if you are a man pleaser you cannot operate in discernment you know that if you want to receive if you if you delight to receive appreciations from men delight to please them delight to when they see good good things about you you cannot operate in discernment this is discernment as soon as he detected a symptom i am telling you wherever you go on the streets in your family in your uh, family functions in your church when you meet with christian people when you meet with church people if you detect symptoms like that you need to exercise discernment and expose it hallelujah hallelujah many many times i had to tell people no i cannot pray with you because you don't carry a spirit that i carry the spirit of god a person who disagrees how can two walk together unless they agree so so how can i pray with you if you don't even agree what i'm saying no so you are not agreeing and you are not it's not that you are not agreeing with me you are not agreeing with the spirit of god that is speaking so i cannot i cannot pray i have done that with people because because that is discernment we detect immediately what what spirit the person is carrying what spirit the person is carrying hallelujah okay then he says repent therefore of this your wickedness and pray god if perhaps the thought of your heart may be forgiven you for i see that you are poisoned with bitterness and bound by iniquity peter is seeing something by discernment you are poisoned you are poisoned by bitterness and bound by iniquity there is bitterness in your heart what bitterness he was jealous he was jealous of philip he was jealous of these apostles because they took his prominence from the city there is bitterness there is iniquity you want the gift of god you want the gift of the holy spirit to come against god's kingdom that's not going to happen there is iniquity bitterness that's why you offer money to buy the gift that's a symptom of sorcery spirit that's a symptom of jealousy that you force you cannot force the gift of god to come upon you you are you are forcing the gift of god to 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 be received by you by giving money that cannot happen okay any which ways discernment that comes with time okay discernment that comes by detecting the symptoms are we understanding then the next one is the important one i want to come upon discernment that comes with time with time and prayer that is spending time in the presence of god now we are coming to the next aspect of the definition of discernment okay it's already time but what was the definition of discernment i gave you the gift of discernment functions on having knowledge and understanding of the word of god and secondly spending hours spending a lot of time with god in the secret place that is the second level of discernment where the holy spirit gives you fire where the holy spirit gives you the eyes of fire where the holy spirit takes you deeper where the where the holy spirit breaks the bars of iron breaks the pangs of darkness and takes you to the hidden locations where you will achieve discernment of things that no one knows it comes with time it will not come automatically it will come with time it will come with prayer hallelujah are you understanding the holy spirit when you time spend time with the holy spirit spend time with the holy spirit the understanding of the word is there but there needs to be a penetration into the kingdom of darkness for you to discover things that you don't know that is another level of discernment 
that is another level of discernment hallelujah i want to give you one example and then i want to end so i was praying and then god allowed me to take this example i was ministering to a woman who was a business woman or something she was doing in mumbai in the city of mumbai <clears throat> a prominent woman and and many things happened after i prayed many things happened in her life but she was half here and half there you know and to towards this woman there was another woman so called christian woman that le that connected this woman to me and i was praying for both of them ministering to both of them so after ministering for 3 4 months 3 4 months uh, maybe uh, it was past 3 4 months i knew them and i was ministering to them god showed me a dream and in the dream i saw this christian woman who connected me and i saw this christian woman waiting on the road on the street and this woman came the another woman and both of them said let's go to this so so called wizard for answers and let's meet him and get him get answers and then then they then they went and then when they went i i came in between and stopped them i said why why you are going to do you know the word of god you know they think no 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 but we want to go to the wizard that is what the dream i saw and what i understood by walking with the holy spirit is what we see is not the truth how people behave with us is not the truth what they tell us is not the truth but what god showed us about them is the truth that is what i understood so if if the person ignores and rejects no 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 nothing is like that so i went to that christian woman i saw, i told her directly i saw you doing this no 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 it's it's not like that wait 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 i will call i will call the other woman and ask her if she went i did not go if she went and oh that i am not able to contact her i will contact her later and then she contacted me later and tell i spoke with with my friend with that woman and i asked her whether you have gone but she said no i i i tried to insist no 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 brother rahul has seen this no she said no she has never gone and because i was that that is the time that that is years back i thought these people are saying true the the right thing maybe i saw something wrong but later after a month i see, i saw the symptoms of the spirit of jezebel and of idol worship in this woman behaving weirdly and when that started to happen the lord taught me what i show you about people that is true don't go on what they say to you hallelujah they may reject we did not do it we did not do that don't 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 believe what they say to you you got to believe so i tell this to people always if god showed you something about a person that is the right thing even though the person rejects it if god showed you it, if it came from god you know and you know it came from god you prayed about it and the holy spirit gave you confirmation it came from god that is that is the right thing so that thing came with time i am telling you some things will come with time maybe you are walking with a sorcerer but you don't know that person is a sorcerer but when you when you are close with the lord and spend time with him with time god will start to expose the person that is a example i gave you you know i was i was going through the doc, documentary of the satanus and he says lucifer the the ministry that is damaging lucifer's kingdom lucifer ensures that he sends fake christians to the man of god around them that the man of god cannot recognize he he took the name of a prominent ministry worldwide ministry which where satan was keeping his people in the leadership of that man of god and the man of god did not know the man of god can only know when he spends time with god i am telling you even in this ministry there are people some people who who left and i knew before they would leave i knew before they will act up because god showed me some things about them because that is discernment deep discernment you don't know things let me even come to the point and the place that some 
some not I'm, I'm not talking about this meeting but i'm talking about uh things that i have witnessed in ministry some parents did not even knew that their 13 year old boy was a satanist started to practice witchcraft they did not know he was going to the sunday school he was going to the church but the parents never knew oh rabba sakataba so people in your own family can be agents of satan i'm telling you these are true these are things that i i have encountered in ministry they did not knew and uh, sometimes if i tell them they will not believe what is he saying but afterwards they recognize and then they say oh god what this pastor was saying was true if would yeah i don't blame the parents because they, no one has taught them discernment to the deepest level if you if you will start you will you will detect the witches in your own family living with you in your own house you will start to detect them it will take time you will go deeper with god the more deeper realms of demonic and darkness will be exposed unto you you will start understanding your family members not how they behave in the natural in the physical not what they are in the natural in the physical but you will have to start you will start having a look at your family members how and who they are in the spiritual and then you will be able to fight on the right grounds then amen amen i don't want to come to examples but i will come when i start the uh, i am just starting i am just giving you an introduction of the next discernment people in my family God started to expose those people, expose those people, many of them, expose those people. And I started to understand I need to break connections and I need to wage war against this, the demons that are operating through these people. Hallelujah. Amen. Are we understanding? Discernment Hallelujah. that comes with time Amen. and spending time with God, that comes with time. And spending time with God. You need to go more and more deeper with God. To understand these things. To understand the depths. Uh, to understand what is hidden in the depths of darkness. There is a verse in the Bible where it says. I will bring you the hidden treasures of darkness. I will break the gates of iron. That is what God means. There are so many things hidden in darkness that we don't know. And it will need discernment. To discover those things. It will need discernment and that discernment will come when you spend, uh, if you are spending long hours with God, when you are spending days with God, those things will pop up. Those things will come to you. Let me end there. And uh, next meeting, I will continue on this one. There are some other few aspects of discernment, then I will wind up on discernment. But let us pray for discernment. Let us pray for discernment. Let us pray for discernment. Hallelujah. Let us be not blind in this time and season. I ask you, Lord, that you will remove blindness from the eyes of people, that they will be able to see, that they will be able to see. If you have discernment, you will detect the witches. If you have discernment, you will detect the sorcerers. You will have discernment. You will detect every evil that people have done behind the scene that does not come. Oh, God, Larabans in front of the eyes of men. Oh, grant us discernment, Lord. Father, I come against every reversal doctrine, every false love manipulation that is being taught, Lord, and that has been practiced, Lord, where the love that they teach takes part, approves, and even promotes evil and sin. Let that be broken, Lord, and let your people love in all knowledge, in knowledge, in all discernment, in all discernment, Father. Oh, Rabba Kabo Tiam Rabba, Lord, even as Lord, let your people be good students of the word of God. Lord, and I thank you, Lord, that you have placed us under your voice that teaches us discernment. You have placed us under your voice that teaches us the difference between the holy and the profane. That, uh, Lord, we will be able to detect symptoms in people. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus Christ, to discern spirits. Oh, to discern spirits. Oh, Father, even as we have, as we have this spiritual journey, and even as we travel towards the 
towards the next session, Lord, of the discerning, discerning with time. I pray that you will grant us, Lord, mysteries to be unfolded, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, to understand that aspect of discernment in the name of Jesus and the people who are sitting here, that their eyes will become the eyes of fire. They will start to see, Lord. They will start to long for your presence, Lord, that they will start to long for discernment lord even as we come lord hallelujah 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 and move forward in this journey lord of your word father in the name of jesus christ of nazareth father thank you once again we give you the praise honor and glory for this time lord we cover all your people, Lord. Hallelujah. And those, even those who are not here, we cover all of us with the blood of Jesus, with the walls of fire, Lord. Around them, in Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. God bless you. Amen. God bless you.